So yeah. The second fact that gave me goosebumps is this. So he gets brought in covered in blood, bleeding, bleeding profusely. And you know, the doctors and the nurses are fixing him up. And and one of his identifiable features besides the way he looked and his pop marks was that he had quite a few tattoos. Now, back in the 60s, tattoos were not a thing, really. Like, guys who were on boats, guys who worked on, like, worked with bikes or on bikes because, you know, motorcycle gangs really started after World War II ended. You know, they started to get more, more popular outside of very small circles of people, but they still weren't common like they are today today you could throw a rock and you'll hit someone that has a tattoo you know what i mean back then not so much so his tattoo that was the most identifiable by corazon amaral was his tattoo that said born to raise hell he in his mind i swear to god he was jesse james he lied so much about all the shit he did He's one of those assholes that would have put newspaper in his shoes to seem taller. You know what I mean? He just, he was a braggart, but he was a fucking loser, like all braggarts are. And so they, he he said, I was born to raise hell because he was born, you know, basically when America went into chaos. He was born on the evening of the Pearl Harbor attack. So he always said he was born to raise hell. And, you know, he might have been right. But he's being this guy's being worked on by the doctors right so this guy's covered in blood and the doctor working on him now think about it oh okay this guy just just got done <laughs> like a day ago murdering eight nurses and within a 24-hour period he, maybe 48 hours he is now in a hospital surrounded by nurses and doctors and they are busting their ass to save his life isn't that fucking ironic? <laughs> I don't even know if that's the definition of irony. It more or less, just, it's infuriating either way. But sorry, I need to actually play my game. <laughs> sorry. But the doctor who's working on him is like, this guy looks like the drawing. Because, like, any human being that was in Chicago on. July 14th, 1966, fucking knew about this murder. Everyone knew about this murder. It was the first time the press had actually ever dubbed someone a mass murderer. So this doctor is thinking, this guy fucking looks like Richard Speck. He looks like the guy that is in the article that I read. And he's like, this guy's arm is covered in blood. But he sees the tip of a tattoo and he's like i wonder so the doctor takes a little bit of water and starts washing the blood away and he said he washed it away and it revealed a letter b and he's like holy shit and he didn't want to alert him. He didn't want to alarm it. He didn't want any. He didn't want to scare the nurses. But he didn't obviously didn't want to tip this guy off. So he took a little bit of a washcloth, wiped it off even more. Bright bold letters, born to raise hell. And he says, "Excuse me, sir, what is your name?" And this dude's drunk, has uppers has lost a shit ton of blood. So what does he say? He says the truth. My name's Richard Speck. And the doctor goes, Ooh! (laughs) And immediately calls the cops and tells, like, the nurse is GTFO. And Richard passes out and wakes up and he is strapped to a bed. And he's in and out. He's barely reacting. He gets brought to uh, the Cook County Hospital, the prison, the jail. And as soon as he's wheeled in, 
uh, another inmate at the hospital recognizes him and starts screaming, I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker. I'm gonna kill you, you motherfucker. Like, you, you know. Prisoners don't appreciate shit like that. It's so weird. Like, uh, I don't know. But he is then interviewed by Dr. I, I, I can't get his name right. Zaporin. I can't. I can never get this dude's right <laughs> name right. Basically, he was the, psych, the psychologist at the Cook County Jail. And the warden there, the guy who was the head of the prison, is like, this motherfucker is not dying on my watch. Everybody in this town wants justice. There's no way I'm letting this dude kill himself. You need to interview him now and tell me if he's suicidal. And the therapist... Okay. Yeah, I heard... Shut up. Um, so he's like, can you go evaluate him? And the, the, the psychologist was hesitant at first. Dr. Z. I'm just going to call him Dr. Z. He's like, I don't really want to interview him because I don't want him to tell me anything that could incriminate himself. You know, he's trying to be he's trying to be a good doctor. You know what I mean? But he goes and he interviews Richard and he's he's like, yeah, I'm suicidal. And then he's like, OK, this guy, he is he's suicidal. We should keep him on watch. And OK, come on, come on. Ooh. So. Dr. Z starts doing all the normal shit that, like, prison doctors do. Gives He says, you know, I'm going to give you a test, this, that, this, and that. He's like, you know, can you read this for me? And he's like, oh, doc, I don't read good, really. I, 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 like, I like to look at the pictures more. I can't really read that well. And, you know, he tries to test that theory out, and he hands back a book. And he's like, can you read a few pages for me? And he's like, after littering, listening to him, like, trip over his words he's like okay 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 he's like all right i'm gonna give you a test of this and that you know to see if you're he's like okay there's no schizophrenia nothing like that you're definitely depressed you definitely have personality issues but he's like he notices that speck is very fastidious very neat very organized and very concerned about his looks and how he appears to others. And the longer that this psychologist gets to know Speck, he realizes Speck is not stupid, like everyone says he is. He couldn't read well because he was so vain, he refused to wear glasses. So he wasn't illiterate. He had a he could read very well. And when Dr. Z tried to give him a, I guess, an IQ test, Richard said, oh, I know about those. I know about those. My IQ is really low. Like once they test me, like I can, I can get really low scores. And then I, and then I, uh, you know, get the good jobs at prison. He's, he's like, oh, he's aware of how he can get around the IQ tests <laughs> and basically like make everybody think he's so much dumber than he really is. So he starts asking, Dr. Z starts asking Richard Speck about the number one thing that people just do not think about or overlook, which is head injuries. Holy shit. The amount of serial killers, murderers, uh, people who have violent tendencies, uh, criminals, like, there is a correlation, very strong correlation, with head injuries and violent behavior. And a lot of people believe that it's in the amygdala where the issues are. I tend to think it's probably more frontal lobe because that's where emotion, inhibition, containing what you do like that's where that shit is being able to empathize with other people and Richard went on to describe dozens and dozens of instances of him either getting concussions being knocked out cold 
Uh, he ran into a steel bar when he was playing hide and seek, fell out of a tree when he was a kid and was unconscious for over an hour, found by his sister. She thought he was dead. And Dr. Z's like, oh, you have a shit ton of brain damage. <laughs> Not only does he have brain damage, but he's been a chronic alcoholic and habitual barbiturate user from the age of 15. The human brain does not stop forming until you are fucking 25. <laughs> so, he fucked himself up good. Let's see what this asshole wants. Me. No. Okay. Um. Ooh, someone just leveled up. Congrats. Uh, yeah. So he starts talking to Spec. And now, mind you, this shit's in the 60s. Quantico and the FBI, Mind Hunter, all that shit, that didn't start happening until the 70s. And they didn't really start taking it super serious until late 70s, early 80s. So this doctor, and I'm not giving him, like, saying he was a man ahead of his time or anything like that, but he definitely was in the criminal profiling range, and he definitely he definitely understood nature and nurture, the what it took to create men like this. I guess that's what I'm saying. And the more he learned about Richard, the more he realized that he was just a fucked up guy. And he pretty much was convicted. Sentenced to the electric chair, obviously. And he would have pretty much faded into obscurity um, if it wasn't for a videotape uh, that came out. <laughs> he died in 1991. He died from a heart attack the day before his 50th birthday. And <sighs> I kind of want to know if anybody in chat knows about the tape I'm talking about. Knows what I'm talking about. Like, at all. Because it's gross <laughs> okay so basically Richard figured out the best way to not get his ass beat in prison and it this makes no sense to me because he was a he was a man's man like you question his fucking manhood at all he'd lose his fucking shit like he well, okay. So basically, Richard started taking female hormones. You heard me right. Richard started taking female hormones. Um so he could grow breasts, which he did. He grew a pretty rockin' pair of boobies. I'm not going to lie. And he became a prison bitch. Happily. Loved it. At least that's how he acted. But somebody, there was a camera in one of the jail cells. And, well, there's cameras in all the jail cells. But they used a recording that they got from Richard Speck's cell at a, at a dinner like a fundraising dinner for like cops and the videotape. I don't think the person who played it watched it fully. <laughs> um, because it showed Richard Speck and two or three very large black men were sitting in a circle and Speck takes his clothes off. He's wearing a pair of ladies underwear and his rockin' boobies. Or hanging out. And he sits on a fellow prisoner's lap. And the prisoner starts fondling his booby area. 
and Richard Speck just starts doing lines of coke off of this dude. And they're like slapping his ass and basically treating him like he's a stripper. And Richard looks at one of the guys and says, if they knew how much fun I was having, they'd set me loose. And then they didn't turn off the tape and Richard started blowing one of the guys and then everyone went, ah! <laughs> Turn the tape off. It's like a hundred people at this fancy fucking dinner watching Rickard, watching a mass murderer who grew boobs blow a black dude. It was awesome. I think it's hilarious. But the very interesting thing is, is that he despised women despised his ex-wife surely pretty much the most out of everyone and he never quite understood why he felt the way he felt he was one of those guys he was one of those guys like uh like uh richard kuklinski or or ed kemper guys that do really fucked up things when they're kids especially just to see if they can feel anything you know and but he had a fucking hatred for women and as the doctor his psychiatrist got to know him better and i know i'm going backwards in time a little bit i'm sorry i jumped back from the booby fondling cocaine show which was just google it it's fucking hilarious um he asked richard once he said did you hate your mother and richard looked very offended he said, no, I loved my mother. I love my mother. She's wonderful. I would never hurt my mother. And he's like, maybe this anger you have towards women is because you really don't love your mother that much. And Richard got offended and he's like, what are you talking about? And he's like, well, maybe you feel pretty damn angry that she moved the family to Dallas and, and, and got remarried to a, a drunk asshole, you know? And he he just kind of, the doctor said he like, was like, oh, maybe. And he's like, well, who do you really hate? And he said, if I hate any woman, I hate Shirley, his ex-wife. And this is the third part of the story that, that gave me chills. Shut the fuck up. Um, sorry. He, one of the last times Dr. Z went and visited Richard, he brought the Time magazine that was written about the crimes. And he brought the pages, which, which had, you know, a layout of the house where the bodies were found, yada, yada, yada. And he had cut out all of the nurse's pictures out of, out of the, the article. And Richard's like, why'd you cut this part out? And he said, I'll, I'll show you why. And Richard, he one by one slid each individual picture. So that way he could look at each girl that he killed. And he saw, you know, the first picture he goes, Oh my God, she was so beautiful. Oh, she was beautiful too. God, they were all beautiful. Like, you know that bullshit. Oh, they were so young. Like, oh, how could I do this? Fucking fake. Fake for the show. Whining and crying. And, uh... <laughs> he... He slides all of the pictures down. Except for one. And he said, and the doctor's basically like, you didn't sexually assault any of the nurses except for one, one girl that got it the worst, you know, Davy, Gloria, people called her glory, the one who was found face down naked on the couch. And I'm going to read the little last line from the article because I just, I could not have worded it better myself. Um, he, 
he slave he saved Gloria Davy Davy for last because she was the only girl he sexually assaulted brutally and the psychiatrist made no comment and held out the last photo Gloria Davy Speck reached for it and suddenly froze his eyes opened wide his lips quivered he looked terrified Dr. Z offered the picture to him again, and he reached the photograph with both hands and held it in his hand like it was a poisonous insect. And he said, you know what? Looking up from the picture with a stunned, distant gaze, this one's a dead ringer for Shirley. So woman that got the brunt of his sexual and physical violence was the one who looked just like Shirley. And isn't that, isn't that just like, think about it, Bundy, same fucking thing. His ex-girlfriend who broke up with him in college because he wasn't going anywhere, who he literally wooed back tried so hard to woo her back, got her back. And then when she agreed to marry him, he ghosted her. And she called him and said, what's wrong? And he goes, I have no idea what you're talking about. And hung up all that shit just to get back at one woman. And then every woman he kills looks exactly like the chick who hurt his fucking tiny dick diaper boy feelings. Bunch of fucking incels. They're all a bunch of they're all jerks. They're all jerks, honestly, and I can't handle it. They're just, they're predators. They're predators who cannot hear the word no because they are so narcissistic. And that is the story of Richard Speck. And his psychologist, the one that he worked with for a few years, the same one from Cook County, the one who wrote the amazing article that made me decide to do spec as my story tonight. <sighs> it was such a good article. And he just, he said that he really believed that spec started taking these hormones and started letting him abuse, let men abuse him. Because that's what he used to do to women. And he thinks that in some way, that is his subconscious feeling so guilty that he now has become the prostitute that he used to beat and batter and use and toss away. And I honestly, I don't even know if that's true. He thinks that it was a way of him like repenting, being repentant of like for what he did subconsciously putting himself in the shoes of the women that he abused and used and tossed aside. I honestly don't like that's, I mean, that's kind of interesting. That's an interesting theory, but I feel like that's giving him way too much credit because one of the most famous quotes of any killer, at least to me, to me, is by Richard Speck. When he was later interviewed by Robert Ressler and the other agents at Quantico who were, you know, trying to get this criminal psychologist part of the FBI up and fucking running. Like, oh, come on. Oh, die, you bitch. Oh, suck a dick. Um, come on. I deem you worthy? Okay, well, whatever. Um, fuck, I just forgot what I was fucking talking about. <laughs> but yeah, um, one of his most famous quotes, one of the most famous quotes, I think, um, when he was asked when he was interviewed in the seventies, why he killed those girls. Like 
Why did you do it? Why them? Why did you do it? And you know what he had to say to that? It just won their fucking night. That's what he had to say. It just wasn't their night. And that's just so, I mean, and also that does sound like a fucking edgy edgelord would say to try to like freak people out to make him see, seem badder than he is. I think deep down all those guys are all scared little boys that just want to be loved, you know, and they just fucking hate the world because no one treats them as special as they know they are. But, but yeah, so, and one of the first times he really actually spoke about it, uh, cause he always pretended that he had amnesia. Um, okay, bitch, what am I doing? Go chase it. Oh, go get it, bitch. Dude. I just threw it. Go fucking get it, nerd. What are you doing? Fine. I don't want to fucking hang out with you anyway. Asshole. Play. Play! Meh. 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 Go get it. Yay! Um, but yeah, so actually in the video of him showing off his rockin' boobies, um, he was asked by one of the prisoners he was partying with, did you, did you do it? What are you in here for? And he's like, eight counts of murder. And they're ask they're like, did you do it? Do it? Did you really kill all those nurses? And he said, sure I did. Which was shocking because he always denied it. He always said no. Or, or, oh, I must have done it, you know. This other bullshit. Okay. Um. And when they asked him why he did it, or they said, how did you feel? That's right. They asked him, how did you feel? And he said, same as always. I felt nothing. And, uh, yeah. Richard Speck died in obscurity as a glorified prison bitch. What the fuck? Did you just bring me a dude? Oh. What? No. Why did you bring me a guy? I don't want that. Oh my god. Oh, correct. Who is this? Okay. Apparently my death fang brought me something. But yeah, nope. Died in 1991. Day before his 50th birthday. Heart attack, just like his dad. Dad died young too. And honestly, I don't think anyone noticed that he died. I don't really think anyone cared. And I don't really think anybody should care. Okay. Can I go now? But yeah. I I think, you know, Dr. Z said that it was him punishing himself. But I honestly think that... He was just doing what he always did. Adapt and do whatever it takes for him to survive. And if he can get fucked up while he's doing it, whatever. He don't care. And I did not check up on where Corazon Amaro is now. I... I didn't even think about it. I saw a few pictures with her at the Philippine Embassy in America on the anniversary of the murders. Um, she was invited as an honored guest. And, um, yeah, I really... All I can hope is that, you know, she has a good life and 
she could move past it. You know what I mean? But I don't know, man. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine hiding under a bed and listening to every single person I live with be exterminated one by one by one over the course of three fucking hours. And you got to wonder too, like, did the other nurses know that she had hid under the bed? Or do you think that they just didn't notice because they were too scared? I feel like they might have known. But I don't think there was a woman on earth that would say, give her up. You know what I mean? I just, I feel bad for... What? Wait, what did I do? What did I, uh-oh. I made someone mad. Why did I do that? I always make people mad. And interestingly enough, I have a friend from high school who, uh, her family knew Richard Speck. And he's just as disgusting and as predatory as I talked about. He will assault children. He will assault the elderly. He's just a predator. That's all he was. Oh, hi. Hi. I will have a wonderful evening. But yeah, that was my story about Richard Speck. And I I know it was really long. I'm so sorry. Chat, you barely talked. You look so bored. <laughs> You're just not saying anything. You're so bored. I'm sorry. I only need three more followers to reach my goal. So if you enjoyed my murderous tale, please consider following. I really, really want more true crime fans in my stream. Because I've already perverted the brains of all of my friends. They're forced to know this crap anyways. I might as well have somebody who already just knows it because they're weird like I am. <laughs> but no, I... Thank you. What in the fuck? Is this a floating bar? What the hell's going on? What? Those cinnamon buns? What? Why are there pastries? Okay, whatever. You know what? I'm not going to mind my business. I'm not going to eat that. It's not good to eat food that you don't know where it came from. <laughs> but, um, yeah. That's for sure spec. Giant piece of shit that nobody should care about. First mass murderer. First to be called a mass murderer. There's definitely mass murderers before that. Um, if there's anybody that you can think about that you would want to learn more about, or anybody that you know some stuff about and you might want to, ooh, and you might want to know more, 